Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are into retro gaming, chances are big that you are familiar with the Mr. FPGA project. This small device has had an amazing development in the last couple of years, giving us access to a vast amount of gaming cores ranging from popular video game consoles such as NES, SNES, Mega Drive, PlayStation, Neo Geo, Game Boy Advance and to even some obscure ones such as Vectrex and Wonderswan. Not to mention the huge amount of retro computer cores and arcade cores. For the longest time, fans of the Mr. Project speculated on which cores would hit the limit of the Mr. system. Many thought that the possibility of a Nintendo 64 core was slim. It was considered too complex and too advanced for the Mr. to handle. But last year, Robert Piper, one of the most accomplished developers on the Mr. Project, took up the task and started to develop the Nintendo 64 core. And his development went surprisingly quickly and in a matter of a few months it was ready to play games. In the last couple of months Robert has continued to enhance the core, even adding features that weren't on a native N64, such as being able to connect your wireless mouse and use it in games that never had mouse support. I've tested this on Sin and Punishment and Wonder Project J2 and I can honestly tell you that it makes a world difference to be able to use mouse in these games. It's truly an amazing accomplishment. Recently Robert announced that he has reached a point where he will quit working on the core. As it currently stands, all but four games of the entire Nintendo 64 catalog will run on the core. This alone is fantastic. But before he quit, he also left us with a surprise by releasing an overclocked version of the N64 core. And it is this very core I will look closer at today. This turbo core overclocks the system's CPU and GPU. We can imagine it as how it would have been if Nintendo had released an Nintendo 64 Pro. Let's try out Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. So this is how the game looks when running on a standard N64. Don't mind the stretched graphics, this is due to that I'm playing it on a widescreen CRT monitor. This is for comparison's sake and something I will come back to a bit later. So what can we do about it to improve the gameplay? Enter Patcher64. This small software allows you to patch some of the most popular N64 games and add settings that weren't there in the original game. You can for instance change the aspect ratio from 4x3 to 16x9. You can increase the frame rate, remove the black bars from the cutscenes and even remove cutscenes. I will leave the link to Patcher64 in the video description of this video. So let's try to tweak the game with some of these settings. Now when we patch the game, let's run it in the overclocked N64 core. The first thing we notice is that we no longer have black bars during the cutscenes. Then we notice that we now have widescreen aspect ratio. Here's a comparison with the standard aspect ratio. This makes a big difference. And finally we also notice that we now have increased the frame rate to a locked 30 frames per second. In my opinion, this is the best way to experience Ocarina of Time. We have tweaked the original game, but still stayed true to the spirit of the game. That's all for this time guys. Please leave comments and suggestions in the comment field. Take care.